My name is Richard Casper. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I teach the course here at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This program started basically because after my injuries in war, I didn't know how to deal with myself. I came back, had a brain injury, my best friend was shot killed. I didn't know myself at that point. Art has helped me by giving me a chance to have a voice again. I used to not be able to leave my house. I couldn't go talk to people. I would physically throw up and get sick. If you could be 0% that's committing suicide, 100% being the best you can be. After the Marine Corps, after being injured, I was at probably like a nine or a 10. And after this school, I was back to like 85% me. For people who may struggle like I did and didn't want to break out of the house and be like, I'm not sure if this is gonna work, I just want them to know my story and be able to come out here and learn with other combat vets how to do art. And if they're looking for one more way, if they just come out here and give me a chance, it's gonna be worth it. What we were aiming for is to express what we were dealing with, you know, when we were deployed and during our military career where we literally get out of our element, go on this kind of like alternate reality to go back in time, think about what we went through and express it to other people. Just being exposed to different concepts of art like at the museum and some of the contemporary art we saw, um, that's what influenced me to try doing a performance piece for my last project. The opportunity to be at the school was just phenomenal. It was amazing. We could at lunch we could go and wander the halls of the museums and that was that was pretty awesome. I think the hardest part was actually talking about what I've been through with it was easy talking to Richard because he is a combat veteran and he has been through stuff I've been through and my job was to, you know, go find IEDs or find landmines or anti personnel landmines and take them apart. And little did I know, I was putting that stuff inside me. At first, it's a little hard to let yourself become vulnerable. Um, you won't really know what to do right away. It takes a couple days. I know for me, it took a week. Being surrounded by a bunch of veterans that like know what combat feels like, knows the after effects of combat, knows how it feels to come home. It was really comfortable being here. They're gonna come to class like normal college students, treated like normal people that know how to be like, I can be in college, I am a normal person, and I can live like everybody else lives. If even one of them chose to go to college and study art and has that artist brain to where it saved them, it's totally worth it. Wednesday? Wednesday. Um, hi, it's Emily here. Um, a little bit of a change in plans today. Originally, Garrett, Leo, and I were going to be doing um, like clay Olympics and like challenge style clay stuff. Um, unfortunately, he had some stuff that he had to take care of today, and so I'm just kind of hanging solo. Um, so I'll just be doing some kind of wheel throwing stuff, doing some work. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining in with me. We will do a rain check on the like Clay Olympics, um, so make sure to check out the schedule for next week. Hopefully we can get something um, worked out for then. But until then, um, I've got a couple things that I, well, I have one thing that I wanted to share with you all today, um, which actually isn't wheel throwing, um, but I didn't really have a plan um, for what to make today, so I kind of wanted to open it up to anyone who's watching. Um, if there's anything specific that you want to see me make, uh, if there's anything that you have questions about or are curious about, um, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, yeah, I'm going to let you all kind of um, take control. The choice is yours. Let me know. Um, make a comment. In the meantime, um, I wanted to show you all how I um, make worry stones out of clay. Um, Kyle said, good to see you, Emily. Good to see you too, Kyle. Well, good to hear from you. Um, looking forward to watching me kick carrots, but I know. He got a little scared off, you know? He just, he wasn't ready for it. Um, next time, next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to show you guys how I make worry stones. Um, just to get us started, wait hopefully for some ideas to roll through the comments. Um, let me know what you're interested in seeing. Um, but yeah, let's, I'll move back over to my wheel and we'll get going here. 
Um, so I've got a plaster slab over my wheel right now just to get started. Um, and I've got um, some, <laughs> some porcelain here actually today um, that I'm gonna start off working with. So I haven't used um, this porcelain on the streams before. Uh, the biggest difference is just that it's a lot lighter of a color, right? A lot of the times the clay um, that I've used previously is kind of this deeper red tone, red or brown tone. Ah, getting my good stretch in today. Um, and they tend to be a little bit rougher too once they're fired, so they're a little bit like, especially um, the brick clay that I use has a lot more texture to it. Um, the porcelain tends to be a lot smoother, and I actually uh, will sand my porcelain so that it feels even kind of softer to the touch. Um, so I think these are, this is a, like a really good clay um, for the worry stones. It kind of inspired me, I think the clay itself, you know, to, to make something. Um, or I don't, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. The, the clay inspired me to make a worry stone just kind of based on, on the texture of it itself. Um, for anyone who isn't really familiar with worry stones or maybe know them by a different name, um, they're essentially just kind of like a small object that you hold in your hand. Um, that typically have kind of an indent. A lot of the times they are made out of um, stone or like gem, uh, I don't know what they're called, but like, you know, the different like jade or amethyst maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, but they'll have kind of an indent carved in them and the, um, the function of them is kind of to hold in your hand and rub with your thumb. Um, and it's meant to be used as kind of like a calming, hence the name Worry Stone, as kind of like a, a something to calm you down. Um, so I used to use one when I was younger um, for anxiety, it would help. Um, I think sometimes folks will use them like in conjunction with meditation. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you all how I make those today. Um, this is kind of neat too, because it is um, not necessarily you know, wheel throwing, I think, is uh, not easy for most of us to do at home. Um, so this is something that can be kind of imagined in different ways, right? It doesn't even necessarily have to be with clay. Um, it could be with like a sculpty clay, or you could carve one out of wood. Um, you could kind of source a stone from um, outside or in your garden, you know? Um, but yeah, I'll be showing you today how I make these out of this porcelain clay. Um, so I just grabbed a little pinch here. I like to make a lot of these when I do make them. Um, kind of going back to the whole idea of making is a little bit of like a meditation um, for me or something that's soothing. Um, I like kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so a little bit of like a repetitive act in the same way that you would kind of be like repetitively, repeatedly um, like rubbing this stone. Um, so I'm gonna make, I don't know, we'll see how many. Um, this seems like enough clay, we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear. I don't make these often enough to really have a good sense. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna dip a little bit of water. This porcelain tends to crack a lot and it's just the type of um, ingredients that are in it that makes it do that. But especially when I make these worry stones, it tends to um, not like that. So I'm just gonna kind of take that ball of clay in my hands and roll it um, until it's like a really loose circle. Um, it's really so bumpy and that doesn't really matter. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, kind of more of the heel of my hand and start slowly rotating and pressing. And I'll start to get kind of a little bit more of like a rock shape. And um, the clay kind of sticks in my hand in a way that that indentation is then formed. Um, and then oftentimes I'll just kind of hold it in my hand afterwards and maybe change the angle of it a little bit. Um, and then if I do get any cracks sort of along the outside, I'll take some water and just um, quickly smooth over those. Um, kind of poetic to be making um, worry stones with your hands, I think. I love, I love clay. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of smooth out any bumps. Um, and each one's gonna be different, like totally, totally different. So I'm just gonna put that one to the side um, and grab another little lug of clay. For anyone who is just joining, um, if you were expecting the Clay Olympics Clay Challenge, I apologize. Um, we're going to have to put a rain check on that one. Um, but 
Let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see me throw. Drop that in the comments. Um, if you're not really sure what the options are. Um, I normally do a lot of functional stuff, so um, vases, cups, bowls, plates. Um, if there's anything specifically that uh, you might be excited to see, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll just, I'll just wing it. I'll wing it today. You can see that one's a lot different of a shape. It's a little bit more oval. Um, I'm excited too. We were hopefully um, getting Zachary to be our like host slash judge for the wheel throwing Olympics on like a second screen. So it'll happen. I'll make sure it happens. All right, our second little worry stone. And so these go pretty quick. Another reason why I tend to make um, more than one kind of in a sitting. Um, they don't take very long. It's also something that's um, nice for me as a functional potter to make because I don't really have to think about them too much. Um, you know, maybe in the same way that I would have to be thinking about um, how a set of cups is working together or how a set of bowls is um, like have the same shape. These I can really just kind of freeform and um, each one can be a little bit different. Yeah, that one's like a little parallelogram action. Yeah, I've been feeling a little unmotivated the last couple of weeks um, in general, and so especially in making. So I haven't really made a ton. Um, I think I streamed with Creative Us last week, and that was really the only time um, that I got on the wheel at all last week. So I don't have kind of anything new and exciting for myself, um, which is why I'm kind of reaching out to you all to see what, what you'd like to see me make. Um, I did make a few new flower frog vases, um, if you're curious as to what those are. You can check out um, the stream from last week that I did to show how to make those. Um, and I can actually show some of the finished products um, from last week's stream, since I didn't quite go through all of those. Peggy Ryan said, Clay Olympics has to happen or Garrett Leo will never live it down. That's what I'm saying. Give him hell. All right. Just to give everyone a, a sneak preview of what Clay Olympics hopefully will look like. Um, we've got a couple of different things that we were planning to do. Um, one of them being, what, what were we doing? Um, a, I think a blindfolded wheel throwing. And so Garrett, um, Garrett doesn't, he knows how to throw, but he does a lot of sculpture mostly. Um, so we were going to do a little bit of throwing and a little bit of sculpture and kind of up the ante on that one. Um, so we're going to do blind, blindfolded throwing. Um, we were going to do team throwing, which was just kind of more of a, uh, a silly thing where we each use one hand to throw. Um, I think blindfolded sculpting. So sculpting a face blindfolded and then um, I think tallest cylinder. So who can throw essentially just like the tallest piece on the wheel. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I might try and find a sample of this porcelain, um, what it looks like when it's fired. It's kind of like a warm white. Um, like I said, it's a lot smoother than the stoneware and the brick clay that I've used before. Um, yeah, let me make the stone and then I'll see if I can find a piece in my apartment to show you all. Um, but porcelain a lot of the times is used for like um, fine china that you might find um, at like a department store. Um, it's used for sinks a lot of the times and toilets and bathtubs um, and bathrooms and yeah, it's just got a nice, bright finish. 
can be very soft. So for anyone just joining, I'm kind of getting us warmed up this morning with um, some worry stones out of clay. And these are just like um, things to kind of calm you down. So you can keep them in your pocket, put them on your desk. Um, seems especially good to have something like that currently. Um, and I'm kind of um, opening it up to you all as to what you'd like to see today. Um, if there's anything specific that you want to see me throw on the wheel, let me know in the comments. That one's nice. I don't know if you all can really see the like um, differences in these very well with the camera, but they're all kind of slightly different. Let me go grab, um, let me see if I can find a piece of this porcelain to show y'all. Here's what it'll look like finished. Um, again, it's just really smooth. I think it might be getting a little bit blown out from the light coming in the room. Um, but yeah, this is a little tumbler form that I make on the wheel. So it like sits on your table and actually kind of rolls around like a top. Um, let me know if you want to see me make these today. Um, but yeah, that's what the porcelain will look like. And this is exposed and really soft. All right, I think I'm going to make, we've got, what, seven right now. Um, I think I'll make it like an even ten um, of the worry stones. And then we haven't had any suggestions so far on what to make on the wheel. Um, so I think I'll come up, come up with something. Either planters, or maybe I can do like a self-challenge, self self-throwing Olympics. Um, maybe we can do like a big piece. I'll try throwing with like a large amount of clay um, and see how that goes. Maybe make like a big base. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. It's like a little bit more triangular. So one thing when I'm using this water on the clay, um, I don't want to use too much, otherwise stuff will get like really, really slippery and kind of messy. Um, so I will just kind of dip like one finger into my bucket, pick up a little bit of water rather than dumping the whole thing in there. Um, otherwise the clay just really, really wants to slide around um, in your hands and you don't have quite as much control with it. So again, just kind of rolling in two hands to make a rough sphere and then bringing it down to the heel of my hand and kind of rocking it um, back and forth. If you're out there watching, um, drop in the comments maybe where you're from, what your name is, if you're, if you're feeling like you want to um, I'm Emily and like Christopherson nice to meet you I'm currently in Chicago Chicago Illinois exciting time all right so we got nine ooh this tenth one is going to kind of throw off the balance. We've got like a nice little three by three grid right now. So I think I'm actually going to stop there. Um, I'm going to put the porcelain away. I'm not going to throw with this today for two reasons. Reason number one, um, <laughs> I've been very lazy with cleaning. So my splash pan has still got um, red clay in it. So I don't want to mix the two because I can recycle the clay even after I've thrown with it. Um, and actually this porcelain is a mix that um, 
I made when I was in school and have sort of leftover clay from. And so I have to recycle all of that in order to use it. It's not like I can just go out and buy more bags of it. Um, so I have been very picky about what I use this for because it takes a lot more kind of time and energy um, to make it to be able to use it. So I'll wrap this up. Put that off to the side. Um, all right, so I think, what should I start with? I don't want to go right into large. That makes me nervous. That's not setting myself up for success. Um, so I might do a quick warm up. Um, just to get going, I'm going to move my plaster slab. And we've got our wheel again. Um, I'll show off for a second some of the different little um, faces that I made last week. If you want to see how I finished um, these, I think I only finished one, um, but I did a stream um, for the organization that I work for called, now called Firebird Community Arts. We were previously known as ArtReach Chicago. Um, we had a little rebranding party um, and I showed how I finish off these flower frogs. So if you're curious about that, um, I think you can head over to their Facebook and there should be a video. Although I, the audio isn't great. I had some technical difficulties, but this is one of the forms that I threw last week. You can see I kind of went with a little squiggle motif. So I got two little tiny, tiny hands or ears. Um, I also added kind of these um, places for your fingers to be able to take the lid off a little bit easier. Um, and that's the lid. Again, just kind of experimenting, playing around a bit more. Um, these are prototypes, so I'm just kind of like trying to figure out how I like them the best, you know? Like the little details, pulling all those together. So this is another one from last week. This has got a little double hand wave. Um, again with the squiggly top. I definitely like the squiggly top, I think a bit more than the um, like straight around. And I'll show you guys what that looks like right now. Here's another one, got a little fancy with the cutouts. There's like little holes on the inside. And this was just the straight top. I actually had a mistake with the lid. This hole is really large because I broke through the center of it. Um, yeah, adventures in wheel throwing. But yeah, and then I'll show you the last one, the final larger piece that I did on last week's stream. This one's really fun. Um, again, a little bit fancier with the little attachments um, and a nice wavy lid. This one was the most even that I've done the lid. I'm getting better at that. That's definitely taken me a lot of practice. All right. Now let's show and tell us over. Clay Mount Castle. Love the programming. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, okay, I'm going to measure out some clay. We're going to do like maybe a quick one pound warm up. We'll just do like a, we'll just do a cup. Cup to warm up, and then I'll do like a large eight pounds, nine, ten. Let me know, folks. Let me know what you want to see. I think ten pounds would probably be truly challenging. But I'm gonna get my clay props. I actually should have kept that wedging board over here because um, I will want to kind of um, warm it up a little bit before I get going. I'm just going to use my wire tool to cut through this clay. And I've got a little kitchen scale here um, that is currently in grams. I bought this kitchen scale for clay to measure out um, clay throwing and like materials. It's nice. It has uh, grams and like you know milliliters and pounds and ounces. Um, but I brought it here because I brought all my clay stuff here and found out that it's also really great, great for um, using in the kitchen, doing a lot of baking. Obviously it's a kitchen scale, it's great for the kitchen, um, but it's kind of handy. So this has been living in my kitchen at the moment um, and just brought here for special occasions. Okay, so I've got one pound that I'll get started with. Oh man, <laughs> is 10 pounds the rest of this block? I don't know. How big can we go? Um, when I was in high school, 
We ordered, yeah, let's measure this. We ordered a, um, a new wheel from a company, oops, that totally zeroed out, which means it is probably going somehow. Um, play from a company, I believe, Japanese, um, or a wheel from a company, and they sent out like a technician um, with the wheel, which was really cool. I, I don't know if that's something that they only do for schools, um, but this artist like gave us a demo on the wheel um, and took a whole 25 pound bag of clay and threw this huge bowl with it. It was amazing. Um, so I don't know that I'm going to be on that level. I actually don't have enough clay currently to be on that level. Um, but we'll do half. We'll do 10. Or not even half, but we'll pretend. OK. Oh my gosh, that's large. So that's 8 pounds. Let's commit. Let's do 10 pounds. I'm just cutting off another little two pounder here right now. Um, I think I'm going to go for a little bit more of a traditional. That wasn't even one pound. I'm just getting nervous. Um, a little bit more of a traditional base shape. Like, I don't think I'm necessarily going to make the flower frog base this way, although it might honestly be easier to do it that way. Um, You see my hesitation growing as I put more clay on there <laughs> each time. It's a lot of clay. There we go. All right, 10 pounds and 0.6 ounces. Oh. We're testing myself today. A little solo challenge. It also looks very large because it's a lot thinner. It's kind of wide this way, but it is still a lot of clay. Um, the more clay that you start adding, the longer everything takes um, because there's just so much more to move. <laughs> this is so much. Oh, gosh. And I also got a little bit of flour, a little bit of my sourdough starter on the clay. That's all right. It'll add some, some good yeast. All right, so we'll set this to the side. I'm going to do a little bit of um, wedging on the wheel here. Normally I do it on my plaster bat, but um, I don't feel like moving it back. <laughs> and there's lots of stuff on it. So I'm going to wedge this up first. Uh, I might have to stand up to do it. Um, but wedging essentially is just a way to get your clay nice and warmed up, um, get all your clay particles aligned. Oh my gosh, this is a massive amount of clay. Also not a great angle that I'm at. There we go. So especially with a large amount of clay, it's a lot more important um, to get everything wedged, just to kind of loosen that clay up. Um, and hopefully make it a little bit easier to move around. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so th this little 10 pounder might take me a while, um, but definitely let me know if um, there's anything else that you guys would like to see today um, on the wheel. If you have any requests, take any requests. So one of the reasons that I like doing this on plaster typically or like a canvas, you can see that the clay is kind of sticking to the wheel, um, which isn't the end of the world. But if the clay is like super wet, sometimes like larger chunks will stick. Mount Castle asked, does the humidity of the room matter at all? Um, not when you're throwing. The humidity of the room will definitely affect how fast your clay dries. Um, so if you leave clay just kind of out in the open air, um, it starts drying. But if you live in like a more humid climate or say it like rains, um, you'll definitely notice that it takes a lot longer and vice versa. If you're in a drier climate, um, your stuff might dry out a lot faster. And typically, like for something small like those worry stones, I'll just leave them out to dry. It doesn't really matter how fast or slow they dry. 
um, but with something larger or a bit more complicated with like attachments, um, you want to make sure that those don't dry out too fast, otherwise um, you can run the risk of your pieces cracking. Okay, <laughs> I'm like a little out of breath. We won't talk about my quarantine workout routine because um, it doesn't exist. <laughs> I've not been chiming into, I think is it Luke Pell who does the workout routines for creative vets. If you are working out, you can check those out. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Definitely didn't really wedge this as much as I normally would have, but that's okay. So I'm just kind of trying to shape it up and then I'll round out the bottom. one pound real quick and that'll go a lot faster um, and be a little bit easier. Okay, so just starting off with a simple cup, pop that down on there, got to turn my wheel on. I like to start just by pat centering and then introducing some water. I should probably clean this clay off. Um, so I switched over to a red grit clay. Um, for anyone who's familiar with ceramics, it's like a mid fire um, cone 0506 clay. Um, and that just means that it's fired to about 20, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to start by getting the centered. Grab my water. Nice and on center. So I'm going to start opening it up. I'm already thinking about how challenging it's going to be throwing that 10 pounds. <laughs> and um, feeling nervous, feeling nervous about it. But this is a nice little, little warm up, get my hands moving, um, boost my confidence level <laughs> a little bit. Maybe I'll throw another one after I throw the 10 pounds. I really don't know how that's going to go. Someone asked me in one of the previous streams like what the largest amount of clay I had thrown with was. Um, I feel like I've definitely at some point probably thrown with 10 pounds of clay. Um, but I don't remember it and maybe that's because it was a failure and I've blocked it out of my mind. But um, I'd say typically just with the stuff that I have been making recently, I don't usually go over six pounds. Um, so this is gonna, this is definitely gonna be working my muscles a little bit. Just to give you an idea of like how big you can get something, that um, the larger flower frog that I showed a couple minutes ago, um, I think was about four pounds. And what I'm working with right now is one pound. Ooh, got hair in my mouth. So just starting with a little cup. My cups are pretty simple in their forms, so they're just kind of straight line, um, straight walls with a little bit of taper towards the top. So as I'm pulling up, I'm pulling up, but also towards the center.
Easy peasy for now. So I'll kind of round the rim out a little bit. Um, with just using my sponge. And then I'll come in with uh, my wooden knife tool. Just like that in a little bit of water. I'm going to trim off the bottom here a little bit just to make the sides a bit straighter. decide what it wanted to do. There we go. Okay, and then I'll just take the back of um, this tool that's like a really straight line um, and kind of press it up against my cut form to kind of further shape it and make it that really um, crisp line that I'm looking for. I'm going to color it in just a little bit at the top taper is kind of um, not as the angle isn't right. I don't know. I was, <laughs> I was trying to say this the last time I was making the, the vases. I definitely need to brush up on my geometry. I don't know what angle that would be or what you would call that. Cute. Uh, I'm going to get any excess water out of the bottom of my piece, otherwise it'll kind of soak in um, and just uh, affect the integrity of our bottom. And then I'm just going to go back on the rim once more, get any excess slip off, and then I'm actually going to flare the rim out just a bit. Um, if you see me kind of closing one eye, um, I can get a better sense for what the profile looks like looking at it with just one eye than two. It like flattens the, um, flattens my depth perception a little bit, um, or anybody's depth perception by just closing one of your eyes, um, and just gives me like a better feel for what it, what the form looks like. I don't know if you can hear it, but our upstairs neighbors have a piano, um, and every so often we'll kind of sit down and play it. They've been playing some really beautiful, um, pieces this morning, but normally our mix, and I love it, it's like, um, I don't know what the song is called, but it's like, what is love, baby don't hurt me, that one, and like Shakira, Hips Don't Lie, just like some good jammers, um, it's been a lot of fun, getting to hear what they play. Okay, I'm just wiping my hands um, to go take this piece off. And I'm going to kind of briefly pat them dry too. I've got a little towel down here just so that my hands stick better to this piece. Um, and I'm going to grab just a little board to set this down on. Uh, and I'm using wood here. The wood will kind of absorb some of that moisture so that it um, doesn't stick. All right. Our little cup, our success. For me to remember when we don't know how this 10 pounder is going to go. So I'll put this to the side. I'm going to clean off my wheel. Since I'm throwing a larger piece, I'm going to put something down called a bat. Um, and that is just kind of like a, it's a piece of plastic. There's a couple different types and materials that you can get them made out of, um, but mine are just plastic. They look just kind of like little records. Um, and they've got holes in the back. And my wheel has kind of corresponding holes that I'll put some pins in, um, and I can just set this on top. That way, I'm not having to remove the whole piece. Um, I can just take, essentially, the, the head of the wheel off with me. Um, so I've got these little, we call them bat pins. They're just kind of like little bolts. Put those into my holes on the wheel, and then line that up. So we're good to go. <sighs> This is like a baby of, baby amount of clay. I'm just gonna try and shape it a little bit more. And then we'll get it on there. A loud noise probably coming. Okay. So pad centering is super, super key when you're working with a large amount of clay like this. 
Um, all this is doing is it's starting to get that clay kind of even all the way around. Um, so for anyone who's unfamiliar with centering, I kind of breezed through that um, with the cup demo. Um, but if you imagine the very middle of the wheel, if there's like a, a string or like, you know, pole coming up from that center point, we want every um, piece of clay to be rotating around that sort of evenly. Um, so pat centering is just kind of getting us closer to that before we start really using our muscles, um, which I'll be using a lot of muscle in this. And I'm using more of the heel of my hands, especially for this chunk of clay, just to kind of move it a little bit more. If I'm just kind of patting with my palms, not only would it be really loud for you all, um, but I can do a little bit more with just the heel of my hand. I am so nervous to do this. I do not know how this is gonna go. Okay, grab some water. Um, and we'll just have to take it really slow. I'm definitely gonna have to use a lot of, kind of my full body. When I was doing that smaller cup, I was using mostly just my my hands, but um, I'll have to kind of use the weight of my body to move this around as best as I can. Uh. So I'm starting just by pressing down to make sure that the clay is really attached to the wheel. Um, it's always a bummer when you like get all settled and then you go to start centering and your clay just like flies off. Um, that generally happens because water will kind of sneak under there and get in between the clay and your wheel. We don't want that, so Fo focusing on that downward pressure first. <sighs> Already tired. This is gonna be huge. Okay, so now I'm gonna start something called cone centering. So I'm kind of um, bringing that clay back up a little bit. Um, sometimes you'll see this done really tall. Maybe I'll get there with this piece, um, but right now it's still kind of so off center that I'm just gonna do shorter versions of that to try and get it really kind of closer, faster. And then I'm just gonna press back down on it. For anyone just joining, welcome. We're doing a little 10 pound personal challenge. So you can see I'm using a lot of like my leg, really having to rely on my whole body, not just my hands or my wrists. Um, and I'm like sliding back <laughs> in my stool as I try to press against this right now. So I just took my foot off the pedal, um, which is helping me get a little bit more leverage from up top, so I'm not kind of in that outstretched position. Also, for anyone who didn't know, this is an electric wheel, and I'm controlling it with a little foot pedal down here that just kind of like beep, beep, works like a little bit like a car pedal. All right, we're feeling better. Still working slow, um, just to get us to that. Working hard, working hard. Yeah, the magic definitely doesn't happen as fast um, with the larger stuff, especially since I do not have a lot of practice doing Uh, 
Um, one sort of interesting thing about wheel throwing um, is um, it's a little bit less about sort of strength, um, right? Like obviously I'm buff, but <laughs> um, it, you don't need to be super strong um, in order to kind of move around a large piece of clay like this. It has to do a lot more with kind of the tension that you hold in your body, how you use your body and kind of your body weight against that clay. Um, but also where you're applying pressure to the clay is really important too and can um, really sort of change your outcome. Um, so I'm pressing either in the middle or kind of on the left side to apply most of my pressure. Um, and there's a lot of physics that is involved with this that I am not good at explaining. But essentially, the clay is coming into your hands um, at certain points, and it's easier to apply pressure at certain points for certain things. Um, so when I'm centering, a lot of that pressure, like I said, is either coming from the middle or um, that sort of left side, so like six through nine o'clock is where that pressure is coming from. Um, and as long as I'm applying that pressure kind of constantly and steadily, um, hopefully we'll have success. <laughs> Again, just working really slowly um, till we get there. Just bringing her up and bringing them back down. Ooh, just kind of ripped off a big chunk of clay. That's all right. Um, recycle it and use it again later. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of square this up and then I think we're centered enough to, to continue. I say that with hesitation because I am hesitant. I'll straighten up the sides here. I saw a video once of um, these two men working together on like this giant wheel. It, I think um, it wasn't in the U.S. It was, um, I can't remember what country it was in. Um, but they were essentially like producing these large kind of um, pots that you would see, you know, outside or like in a very um, big building like in the city, you know. Um, and it was just like the two of them working together, like full body on this thing. And the, you know, the piece of clay was probably about this wide around, it was like a good five or six feet. Um, it was incredible. So it's still a bit off center. Um, I think I should do a little bit more work to get it centered before I continue. It's really important to kind of get that clay um, centered from the beginning, because if it's even just a little bit off in the beginning, it can really affect everything after that. So I'm taking my time now um, to really try and get it right so that I can set myself up for hopefully success. Also, um, if anyone has like taken a beginner's wheel swing class or is interested in it, um, this is a little bit more how it'll feel for you trying to center the first time, right? Like I'm like really working at this. Um, it's not happening very quickly, but it's definitely a bit more of a realistic um, sort of expectation when you're first starting out. Um, centering is, again, since it is so kind of key that you get it right, um, it's a really tricky thing to kind of get used to. Um, so you end up taking a lot of time on it trying to get it right in the beginning. My 
bat is also, it's wobbling a little bit. Sometimes the pins don't kind of hold it perfectly in place. So that might also be contributing to why this feels a little bit off center. Although it's also largely because it's not truly on center. But I think we're in a good place. I'm getting tired. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of keep moving. Um, so the next step is to start opening it up. So I'm just gonna dive down um, let's slow my wheel down just a little bit. Sorry if that wheel is creating kind of any extra noise in the background. If y'all have any questions, feel free to shout them out in the comments. Um, I'm happy to talk to you rather than just kind of like rambling to myself. So let me know if you've got any questions. Um, and again, if there are any requests um, for what you want to see on the wheel after this large piece that I'll be making, uh, let me know. Taking requests today. Um, so what I'm trying to do, the shape that I'm going for, kind of like a taller base shape, um, is definitely, I'm realizing it's gonna be a lot trickier than like a bowl or um, a platter would be. Because you're kind of going for that height and everything just gets harder once it gets larger. So, I also don't have a great sense for how far I'm going down just because it is a bigger piece of clay. So I'm gonna grab my needle tool, stick that down in the middle. Good thing I did, because um, I'm at kind of a good thickness right there. It's about uh, a little bit over a quarter of an inch maybe. Um, and I don't really wanna go any farther than that. So I'm gonna start pulling it out. My bat is moving a lot as I do this. Um, I don't know if you can hear it. I'm making like a rocking noise. Okay. This is not even half of the hard stuff. It really gets a lot more challenging once we start pulling up. grabbing water to keep everything from sticking. I don't know what shape, I had an idea of what shape I wanted to go for. I don't know if I want to do that shape now. I don't know, I'm trying to think. It's always good to have a plan when you sit down at the wheel, unless you're just trying to practice, in which case, um, Having a plan sometimes can be disappointing. Okay, I'm gonna really work on that bottom. It's pretty uneven, so I'm just gonna compress it with my sponge. Try and smooth that out. I just had an idea and it is kind of like the flower frog vase that I said I wasn't going to do um, but I think it would be really cool and I, I think you all can see it I've got like a little it's just a like salt and pepper shaker set but I really like that shape and I think it would be kind of a fun shape to try adding that little flower frog detail to on the top um, so that's the shape I'm gonna go for I think I just made it a lot harder for myself but Aim high, right? Aim high. Okay. So now we're going to start pulling up. And this is going to be, normally when you do this with a smaller piece, it's mostly just your fingers doing the work, um, but this is going to be a lot more like a full hand situation um, just to get us started since this is so much clay. I just popped an air bubble. That's another reason you want to wedge your clay. I think it's any um, like air that's trapped in it out. 
which again can just like if you have air bubbles in your clay it can just affect the like integrity of the piece um, and its strength but it's just a base um, yeah sometimes when I'm growing they'll kind of pop as I'm pulling my walls up it's fun So I'm using my whole palm on the outside and then just my fingers on the inside. Um, stopping if I feel any kind of um, friction from my hand. Grabbing some more water. So I'm gonna try going kind of straight up with a, a taper at the top and then I will try closing off that top. Hi there, Jet Set Geometry. Welcome. Sorry, I um, have missed out on my eye appointment, so <laughs> I definitely need uh, a different prescription. And like the computer is just far enough away from me that I can't totally make out everything. Um, so I hope I got your name right, right our, our new friend, Jet Set. I am here working with 10 pounds of clay at the moment, um, a lot more than I normally throw with, a little bit of a personal challenge. If you came here because the Creative Arts live schedule said we were going to be doing Clay Olympics, um, I apologize. We had to postpone that, unfortunately, um, and we'll hopefully be able to do those next week. Keep your eyes peeled for any info on that. Okay, we're already a lot taller. I'm feeling better. Um, but everything is still really thick, so it's going to be a lot more stable. Once you start getting stuff thin um, is when I'm going to start getting nervous. Um, it's also going to get to the point where it gets so high that I can't rest my elbow on my knee, which is definitely a big crutch for me um, as, a, as a ceramic person. Um, so we'll see how it all goes. I'm just going to do a quick pull kind of with both palms on the outside. It'll help really move that clay from the bottom which is where it's at its thickest, sort of right by the wheel, up a little bit. We're getting tall. I'm gonna slow my wheel down just a bit too. The big problem that I tend to have when I'm throwing large is I tend to like thin out this bottom portion to the point where it can't really support the weight up top. Um, that's also, again, a common problem that people have a lot of the times when they're starting off learning how to throw. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try to be extra conscious of that and not make that too thin. You know, like I try to go too hard too fast um, and then it bites me in the butt. I'm like, yeah, I got this. I can do this. Let's just whip it out. Doesn't, doesn't work like that anymore. So we're taking it slow. Taking it slow today. Again, I'm trying to do my best. It's a little bit more difficult with this collar piece to kind of taper in, um, but I'm trying to pull up and in towards the center to keep everything really stable and because that is kind of closer to my final shape as well. Whew. I'm gonna need to like do some stretching after this. Clay Mountain Castle, thanks for joining. Um, hope to see you for the Clay Olympics. Um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Clay Mountain Castle just peaced out. Again, trying not to go too hard at the bottom, even though that's kind of what I want to do. Keep it cool, keep it cool, Emily. Um, just to give you all kind of an idea, I don't know if it's easy to tell on screen, um, but right now my clay is, I don't know, maybe half an inch thick. Ideally, I want it to be kind of at a quarter of an inch 
um, or less. Again, that gets trickier the larger you go um, to get it kind of that thin. So. So excited. getting that water out of the bottom of my piece. Um, I chose a, a kind of not on purpose, but I'm realizing right now that I chose a very good clay to do this with. Um, earlier, if, if you weren't with us kind of in the beginning, I was working um, on some kind of small worry stones out of a porcelain clay. Um, porcelain tends to be a lot softer. And so what I mean when I say that is it doesn't really hold itself up quite as well, um, which means that working with a large piece like this, it would be a little bit more difficult to get it tall and get it thin um, versus the clay that I'm using right now, which is a, a brick clay. It has a lot of grog, a lot of kind of that sandy clay in it already um, that helps it kind of support itself. Um, so I'm able to get pieces a little bit thinner and a little bit bigger because of that. Um, this was just kind of the only clay that I had left. So, so that's why I chose it. Um, but if you are kind of being intentional about what you're making, um, different clays definitely have sort of different characteristics, different properties that can make them better suited for, for something over um, something else. Oh! Getting tall. Getting tall, and I'm starting to notice that it's getting a bit thinner at top. So I think I'm going to try working mostly just on the bottom um, to see if I can really even that out. It's always better to have it um, thicker at the bottom than at the top. It again just supports itself a little bit better. Um, but I want to try and get that really even. So I'm going to do just some like what we call, I don't even know if this is a technical term, but like a half pull, right? So I'm, I'm really just working that bottom half section to start thinning that out. Um, and then at this point, I'm going to just really lightly, not even really applying pressure to, to move that clay, um, but I just want to make sure that that top portion stays on center with the bottom portion. So I'm just like lightly running my fingers over it make sure that everything is uh, is good. I also think I'm going to collar in this top. It's starting to get a little wide. Ooh! It's fun having a little camera there to see what this looks like. Because um, I get a very much an aerial view, and it's just like a, oh, like a deep void. Same hot stain. We'll do that same thing again. I'm going to do kind of a half pull, put some water on the inside um, to thin out that bottom. on me. It just means that I'm applying a little bit too pressure too quickly, which is always, always why I mess up um, with these larger pieces. I'm really used to like just speed racing, you know? I can't speed race. I just slow down. Oof. Again, top is feeling pretty good. Um, 
it's the bottom that makes it all work. you guys are picking this up but it is getting a little wobbly on top and I think again this is why it can be really important to have your clay on center from the beginning I think it's just as I'm really thinning out that bottom section um, it's kind of ex exposing isn't really the right word that I'm looking for but I can't think of a better one at the moment um, it's yeah it's just coming through how that clay was a little bit off center and now it's kind of translating into the rest of the piece, just kind of working its way up. So again, I'm going to kind of just lightly, not applying too much pressure, work my way all the way up to the top to kind of put everything back in line with each other. I'm also starting to get a little bit of a ripple at the bottom here. Um, that actually might be an air bubble. So I'm going to do, I just did what's called like a downward fold. So I'm actually doing similar things, just applying light pressure, but um, working my way down, which can help compress that clay. Help take a little bit of the strain off of like what I'm asking it to do right now, which is a lot. So just working down, making that clay happy. All right. Work a little bit more on the bottom. See if we can get that super thin. With something like this, a piece um, really large, it's obviously taking a lot of focus from my end. Um, but the thinner that I start to get, the more I really have to listen and respond to what the clay is doing. Um, so I'm, again, really, really subtle things, but adjusting my pressure um, and kind of lightening up that pressure if needed, slowing down my wheel as well if needed. Um, But yeah, uh, again, a little bit of like a, um, I feel a little bit like I'm, I'm relearning right now. Um, you know, I've thrown a lot of smaller pieces over the course of time, and so something like that is really easy. Um, but something large like this kind of really tests um, my basic skills. You know, like this isn't a hard shape for me to throw normally but with that size element it becomes something challenging um, so I'm feeling I'm feeling a lot of the things that I like tell my beginning students to pay attention to um, when they're first kind of trying to figure everything out um, so really listening to that clay which can be hard when you're first learning because you're like I don't know what I you know you don't know what you're looking for but um, Working just really slowly and, and responding to what the clay needs. And that's why a lot of um, a lot of this is just about practice too, right? You get to know better what certain things mean. Um, and 
and remedies for those um, problems that you encounter. She's tall. This is probably, um, I would say probably around a foot right now. Um, very exciting. I'm feeling proud of myself. I think it can definitely be easy to get sort of stuck um, in a, a bit of a routine. Um, and you know, once we start feeling good at something, it's like we want to keep feeling like we're good at doing it. Um, but I'm kind of realizing in this moment, like it is important to continue kind of challenging um, our skill set and ourselves. Um, there's always something more. Uh, to learn. I'm like trying to be super philosophical and also <laughs> not mess this up. But yeah, I'm, I'm feeling proud of, of being able to do this. And I think even if it doesn't end up being successful, right, there's still a lot of room for error even though we've got a solid foundation at the moment. Um, even if I messed up, I think I'd be proud just for giving it a shot. Um, yeah, definitely always good to kind of challenge what we normally do. Still really thick at the bottom. And it's um, a problem that I definitely had when I first started was getting that bottom thin. Um, I don't think it's super, super important. Again, this is just kind of something that I ideally would like to have that bottom a little bit thinner. It's also really hard to tell. You can't see it, right? It's all kind of based on feel. It's hard to tell how thick or thin that actually is. I think I'm going to finish that poll. I just needed to kind of reset um, my hands. I'm going to finish this poll, and then I think I'm going to do a little kind of trick with the bottom here. Um, I want to um, widen the base a little bit, both for aesthetic, <laughs> both for aesthetic reasons, um, but also I think it'll help sort of thin that bottom portion out. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that my top is good. Take my sponge on the inside and then I'm just pressing that bottom section out a little bit. And then I'll do one pull to kind of even out that shape to match this bottom. As I go a little bit wider, again, my walls are going to get a little bit thinner. You might notice the piece sort of looking a bit shorter, too. Um, that clay is kind of moving. I've definitely got a huge, huge air bubble kind of on the lower portion of this piece. I might try and pop it.
<laughs> I like hold my breath through every pull. Um, I'm not lying when I say things could really go wrong really quick. Um, so again, while it feels like, oh wow, she did it. I'm not done yet. Not done. Um, the studio that I work at uh, is a, a clay studio, but also a glass blowing studio as well. Um, and I think that attitude is definitely um, a glass attitude is, um, in addition to like this situation. I don't know if that just made sense what I said, but um, you know, there's kind of a saying with glass, it's like it's not finished until it's in um, the box, until you box it, which is um, the box being like an annealer, the kind of kiln that it goes into. Um, so it's like it's, you don't celebrate until it's in the box. Uh, and that's how I feel right now. I'm not um, not celebrating until this piece is completely done. Okay. I think it might be time to start kind of closing it up. Uh, so I'm going to do one final pull just to make sure everything's really even. And then I'm going to kind of shape up the sides a little bit. Maybe try and get rid of that air bubble. Uh, and then start closing off the top. I'm not really sure how I feel about this shape. Um, granted, it's not really finished yet, right? I'm still closing off the top, but um, I'm not sure how I'll like it kind of with the flower frog design the more that I think about it. It's all just about experimenting, about playing around. So I'm going to grab my wooden knife tool, trim away some of this excess at the bottom, and I'm going to put my hand in there as I do this just so that I make sure I don't go too far. It gives me a sense um, for how far in I can go with this uh, wooden knife tool. So I'm going to do that uh, maybe once or twice more. This is also helping obviously thin out that bottom portion um, because I'm removing that clay from down there. Thanks for tuning in. If you are watching, um, if you're still watching, if you're just joining, thanks for being here. And feel free to shout out any questions as always. Um, yeah, happy, happy to answer those. Or let me know where you're from, let me know your name. Okay, cool. We've got like a nice little column, column thing happening right now. So I'm going to take my wooden knife tool, just that back end, and I've got my hand on the inside. I'm doing kind of like a little bit of a pull um, with my inside hand, but mostly just applying that pressure on the outside. I'm trying to straighten this thing up. There's such a noticeable difference moving past that middle section. It gets so, so much thinner. So just something to work on if I wanted to continue making these kind of large Vessels. Okay, so now we're a little bit more straight up and down. Um, and I'm going to start closing off the top. <laughs> uh, as with any closed form that I'm making, um, I'm going to make sure that I don't have any water on the inside. Ooh, that's also another thing. Like you can just totally like knock into your piece. Um, I've seen people, when they go to take their piece off of the wheel, um, They'll like, you know, step on the foot pedal or something and then the piece will just go flying or um, they'll cut it in half with a wire tool because they like slip up. So wait until the end. Okay, we're going to start closing up the top. 
Um, so I'm just going to put water on the outside now. Peggy Ryan says, still watching. Thanks, Peggy Ryan. With us for the whole, I think it's been an hour and 20 minutes so far. Um, yeah, I'm just going to start coloring that in. Feeling wobbly. So this coloring technique, I'm just kind of taking my hand like this and applying pressure um, from, at multiple points and kind of lightly squeezing in. Definitely gets harder once your clay is a little bit off center. So again, just going to have to really work slowly through this um, to make sure it all comes together. For anyone who is just joining, I'm working with 10 pounds of clay at the moment. Uh, a record high for me. Um, yeah, we're making a, a, a closed form kind of like flower frog base um, on a grand scale. Oh, I was going to pop that air bubble. Do I want to risk it? The thing is, when you have, and let me see if I can find it and show you guys or point it out to you all. Um, I think I might have smoothed it um, when I took that knife tool to the side. But one thing um, when you pop an air bubble is obviously there's air on the inside, so it was a little bit like raised. Um, but once you remove all of that air out, then uh, there's less material there, so you tend to get like an indent in your piece, um, which isn't the end of the world, right? Like uh, maybe it bugs you a little bit uh, aesthetically. But um, if your walls are too thin, then that thin spot can actually end up creating a hole. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick hole just to thin out that clay because as I collar it in, it kind of uh, makes it a little bit thicker. That clay has nowhere else to go, so it kind of um, ripples and gets just a little bit thicker at the top. So I'm going to thin that out as I go. We're getting wobbly. Something that's always important when you're throwing and definitely gets a little bit trickier when you're working with large pieces is you kind of want your hands to always be touching. So it's hard to see because um, I'm working kind of behind the piece, um, but when I'm doing that pull, I've got my thumbs kind of connecting my hands together to um, just help them be that much more stable. All right, we'll keep collaring in at the top. It's getting a little bit easier now, now that I can kind of get my whole hand around it. I'm able to move just a little bit faster. Um, and we will definitely lose a lot of height with this technique. Not a lot, but like, you know, it'll be a significant Okay, so I'm going to do a pull. I'm trying to keep my hands as clean as I can um, when I'm doing these pulls on the inside just so that I don't get too much clay on the inside of this piece since I will be closing it up. Definitely have another air bubble there. Time. 
And then before that gets too small for me to be able to reach into without kind of messing it up, um, I am going to take my sponge one more time and just do like a quick swipe on the inside. I might actually just do like one little pull to straighten everything out too. It's starting to feel like the top is maybe a bit more wobbly than, or um, like not on center with the bottom part. And that's just because I'm only applying pressure to that kind of top portion at the moment. Um, and so that torque can be a little funky. Do a quick swipe on the inside. Make sure my sponge is dry so I don't leave any water in there. We'll keep closing this up. Ooh, I dropped a little drop of water in there. Just put that out first. So I don't know what time it was when I started this, but um, I mentioned before I started that this was definitely going to take a lot longer um, than a normal piece would, just because kind of the amount of clay that we're moving around. I think it's probably been at least we're we're probably coming close on an hour. I think with this one, maybe uh, maybe we've already hit that and gone past that hour point, um, which is crazy. <laughs> went by fast. Or maybe I also just have no sense of time at the moment. Okay, okay. Do a little pull action. Straighten that out. It's <laughs> getting wobbly. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So you can see I'm starting kind of from really low down. Um, I don't want all that pressure to be on that center point. Otherwise, sometimes it tends to kind of fall in um, from the pressure. Cave from the pressure. I'm really doing my best to kind of keep everything controlled, um, but Testing my skills over here. Definitely testing them. Okay, we're getting close. You can see we're getting a little bit more of like a bottle form at the moment. Um, I'm going to continue pulling up this clay on the inside that is kind of getting thicker as we go. I think we're pretty close. I'm not going to worry too much about this top portion at this point because that will kind of snip off as we cinch in um, the, this part. <laughs> um, I'm just worrying kind of about the inside of the nose at the moment, as far down as I can go. I'm just trying to thin that out. Keep everything on center. All right, we'll see if we can close this up.
this portion is starting to get in my way, so I'm actually going to trim that off. I'm just going to grab my needle tool and sort of spin the wheel slowly while um, pressing in all the way through that wall. And I can just kind of take that off. Um, I couldn't get down as far as I wanted to. With that in my way. Cute, like this would be cute just like this, too, but we're going to close it. Last one, I think we're gonna pinch it off. Woohoo! Okay, we did it. All right, so I'm gonna go over that top portion just one more time to make sure that that is really nice and sealed up. Um, I don't want that kind of opening back up as I go in and do some shaping. I feel like I can breathe easy now, easier. Um, okay, I'm going to grab my metal rib tool. I'm starting to notice a lot of air bubbles that I didn't necessarily feel, probably because I was too stressed out <laughs> um, to notice, but I think we'll just have to kind of relax with those. So you can see I built up a lot of slip, um, slip just being a mix of clay and water on the surface, so this is also going to help stuff just kind of dry out a little bit better too by getting all that off in addition to sort of going in and really refining that shape. So this first quick little swipe is just to get most of that off. Mmm, it looks like frosting. Um, again, all of that stuff can be recycled uh, later on. So everything that I'm kind of taking off will be reused. Okay, um, I don't have a ton of option in changing the width at the moment. I'm looking to my little flower frogs that I have next to me to kind of judge what I want this shape to look like. Um, I do like the kind of pillar aspect of it. Um, so I think that bottom we will kind of try to keep straight, right? Like I could bump out this side portion and have it be a little bit more of like a flower bud if I wanted to, um, but I don't think that I do want to. So I'm just going to focus on getting this side kind of straight and shaped up, and then we'll move on to the top um, and decide sort of what angle we want. Do we want it to be a little bit flatter? Do we want it to be a kind of pointy? Um, we don't know. I actually am kind of liking how it looks at the moment. Um, not sure how I managed to do that, but um, looks like I might have just gotten it right on accident. Um, so I'm going to go in and just kind of be really nitpicky about it, about changing that shape. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you were essentially to kind of cut this top portion off, that's like what the flower frogs look like. So right now it's just kind of like an extension down. Um, of that shape, which I'm digging. It is what I had envisioned. Still not sure how I feel about it, um, but I think you really gotta wait till it's totally finished to make those kinds of decisions. As I'm kind of refining the shape up, uh, let's see, it's about 2.35. Um, 
last call. If anybody has anything specific that they want to see on the wheel, um, shout it out now. Now's your chance. Um, otherwise, I will likely sign off after um, this piece is finished up. So, again, if there's anything specific that you want to see me make, um, let me know in the comments. Alright, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. That was super successful. Thanks to anyone out there um, still watching. Thanks to anyone who joined us. Thanks to anyone who's watching this in the future. Um, that was... <laughs> that was intense, um, but good, you know? Um, very excited that this worked out. I also have a feeling I maybe didn't take the same risks I normally would have that um, lead me to kind of ruining these pieces since I was on camera. So thanks for being here and keeping me in line. I'm just trying to, I'm being super nitpicky. I go back and like trim the surface anyway. So these little lines really don't matter, but um, they feel important right now. I just like being able to see the shape sort of for what it is, but I'm going to leave it because I'm just making more. Okay. Um, looks like we don't have any comments for what else anyone would like to see. So I'm going to kind of clean up my wheel. I'll show you how I wire through this piece. Again, this is on a bat, so it's kind of like a removable wheel head. I won't have to actually pick this up, although this is a pretty solid, um, stable shape that I probably could pick it up. We're not trying to, again, mess it up at the very last moment. So I'm going to grab my wire tool wrap it around my hands um, and wire through this. Oh, and then one thing I want to do actually, since this is a closed form, uh, is I want to poke a hole in it just so that that air pressure on the inside um, doesn't build up too much. So I'm going to take my needle tool and in the very center on the top, since I know I'll be adding, um, adding holes there anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just poke it right there in the middle. Um, this, I'm going to give it a little bit of a wiggle just because I don't know how thick it is. And it looks like that clay was really wet, so it's kind of like closing back in on itself. I might wait until that dries a little bit more and give it another poke. Um, but I poked a preliminary hole. Um, I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to give my hands a quick rinse. Kyle said, thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you again for joining. Um, it's been, I think it's been equally as fun for me uh, to do these streams, hopefully as it is for you all to watch. So I definitely, definitely really enjoy um, doing this. So thank you for being here with me. Okay, doing again, just a quick wipe. This clay or this water's got a lot of clay in it. Um, we'll take this off. All right, and our 10 pound um, soon to be flower frog. I don't know where to put this. We gotta find a spot. Do some rearranging down here. Oh, she's heavy. Okay, well, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Um, I think this was the only stream for today, but make sure to check out the creative event schedule. I think there's uh, definitely a stream happening tomorrow um, and probably Friday as well. Um, again, apologies that our Clay Olympics had to be rescheduled uh, as I fall back. Um, but check the schedule next week if you are looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll have um, something else rescheduled for you. But yeah, thank you. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Uh, See you soon.
We are a nonprofit that's helping combat disabled veterans heal through the arts and music. Our art programs in Chicago and California help combat disabled veterans tell their story through art. We enroll them into the best art institutes in the country. We pay for their tuition, their housing, their food all three weeks so that they can finally tell their story through art. We also bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville, to places and rooms like this here at the Grand Ole Opry to tell their story for the first time with pro songwriters all about the things that they went through that they've never been able to talk about before. These programs have been extremely successful in helping veterans combat their PTSD. Right now, Creative Ed's has more veterans applying for our programs than we do funding. So if you can go to creativeets.org and donate, we would appreciate it.